Hello, hello everybody. I hope you're all doing really well. Just wanted to make a quick video to show you how to focus stack using Photoshop. Now there are other programs out there. There's one called Helicon Focus, which does a much better job than Photoshop, especially with small details. But for most uses, Photoshop works fine. So let's jump right in. Okay, so as you can see, we have four images here of the same scene, exactly the same composition, except for this one image here. It's slightly out, but I'll show you what that image is for in a minute. So I focus stack this. So if we look at this first image here and just zoom in uh, on the foreground, you can see that the foreground is actually out of focus. Uh, the midground is out of focus, but the background is nice and sharp. And then this middle image here, the background is actually not too bad in this one, but I actually focused on the middle ground here. And you can see that this rock here is relatively sharp, but the foreground rock is still out of focus. And this is at F16. And lastly, we have this image here, which is focused on the, uh, the foreground. See it's nice and sharp. And then the midground is slightly out and then the background is really out. Now then, these three images were all taken at a shutter speed of 2.5 seconds. So if we just go back to this one here with the background and we look at the foliage around the waterfall, then you can see that there was some movement in there. So it's out of, out of focus. And I'd like to bring that back into focus. Now there aren't that many, um, even though it's two, two and a half seconds, there aren't that many uh, ferns or leaves that are out of focus. I'm really quite surprised actually, especially for 2.5 seconds. So this fourth image here was taken at a much higher ISO and of course a much faster shutter speed. So we're at ISO uh, 800 and you can see that the leaves are nice and sharp in the background there. So we're gonna sandwich that one in as well. So I've already worked on all of these images here. I have, have them more or less the, the right color temperature and I've just copied all of those uh, adjustments from one image onto the others. So I'm just gonna select all of those and right click and then I'm gonna go up to edit in, open as layers in Photoshop and just click that. Okay, as you can see, we've opened up all of these images as layers. So if we just zoom in here 100%, you can see that uh, this image here was the one for the uh, sharp foliage. And then these others here were for the various stages that we focused at. This one for the foreground, this one for the midground, and lastly, the one for the background. So the first thing we want to do is just select all of these layers and then go up to uh, edit and auto align layers. So we'll just click on uh, align layers and that'll just align all of those images up if there was any discrepancies, a little bit of movement. And as you saw in that fourth image, there was quite a bit of movement. So it should be able to get rid of all that and just line them up. So now if we uh, click on these various layers here, you can see that it's done a pretty good job of uh, lining them all up. Now something I didn't notice uh, before, and it doesn't really matter too much, is that this top layer here, you can see that I've actually used a polarizer and the other layers I haven't. That's not a big deal. Right, what are we gonna do first? Well, the first thing we wanna do is just grab the three bottom layers and we're just gonna go up to edit and auto blend layers. Leave it on stack images, just click OK. So now if we zoom in onto the image here, now we'll just unclick this eye here because that we haven't done anything with that yet. But as you can see, the foreground is now sharp, the midground is now sharp, 
and the background is sharp. The only part that isn't sharp are these leaves here. So what we're going to do here is we'll reveal that and we'll put a mask on that and then Command or Control I. Get a white paintbrush, B for brush, choose white over here and we'll leave it at a uh, hundred percent and then we'll just look for leaves or, or anything that's out of focus. So we'll just make the brush a little bit smaller here. I have it feathered and I'm just going to start painting in those sections. So if I zoom in here you can see this is at 200 percent. You can see that this is um, blurry because of wind movement and we're just going to bring that back. Now the alignment might be out a little bit uh, because obviously these are moving around and of course this will be uh, have a little bit more noise in it because it was taken at a higher ISO. Here's another example here this leaves blurry so you can just paint those back in. And, and just keep looking around for areas where you just want to sharpen things up a little bit. Now something else I could do is uh, say I wanted to bring a little bit of texture back in that water there, then uh, I could just paint some of that effect in as well. So I'm just going to make the brush a little bit bigger and I'm going to bring the opacity down to about 30% and I'll just start painting that in there. And it'll just bring in, because remember we shot this at a faster shutter speed. So if we zoom in here. Now you'll notice that there are a few issues here with the water. And we've just painted those out. Sometimes things don't line up properly so they look a bit odd. So you have to kind of especially things that are moving this much. And then lastly, uh, we just crop out the parts that, uh, that we don't want in there. So I'm going to keep this as a four by five. And there we go. Uh, it's a pretty easy and effective way to uh, add depth to an image that would be impossible in the field even if you stop down to f16 or f22. I hope this was helpful. If you enjoyed it please be sure to give me a thumbs up. All right thanks everybody. Mm -hmm.